right, we're here in TV Land's Comic Con suite with Freema Adjerman of New Amsterdam. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me in your spa. <laughs> <laughs> so we are coming off a pretty intense finale of New Amsterdam. Yeah. A lot of the fans are worried it might be your final finale, but I, I think I know better. Um, when you got that, you know, that script and you, you saw the cliffhanger and you saw how it was ending for, for Helen, how did you react? Well, do you know, when I initially um, heard about the show, my reservations were real. I was like, I don't really know if I want to do a medical drama on a network show because I feel like it might be quite staid, quite sedentary, you know, it's it's not revolutionary and I'd just been doing all this uh, incredible stuff and I was, so I was like, oh, maybe not. And then I read the script and was completely blown away and I'm so relieved to say it was nothing like any of my fears. It's managed to hit a bar and sustain it and also what they're not afraid to do is front load stuff yeah. and change stuff so dramatically and significantly and be so representative um, of society and, and so relevant. It just is such a brilliant show. So, so I, from script to script, never really knew what to expect because I know they're, they're fearless in that way. Yeah. So I opened the last one and was like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> There's gonna be some big changes happening in season two for sure. Yeah, I know that, you know, after the, the accident, it was sort of unclear where Helen was. Yeah. Do you, did you have like theories about her whereabouts? Did you like spend the whole summer like thinking, I guess we're still in the summer. Do you know what was interesting for me? I, I spent um, some time looking at what other people were thinking because I knew what I thought and then I sort of had my own kind of ideas of where it might go and we really didn't know for the whole summer. We got the script um, a week ago. Wow. So we spent the whole summer speculating <laughs> with each other. We've got a WhatsApp group, the whole cast, and That's so cool. we were like, what do you think, what's happening? Has anyone got their pickup letter? Um, <laughs> and fans, hearing fans, thoughts and feelings about it has been intriguing as well so we'll see we'll yeah. see which way it goes you get a lot of fan response from the show but you were also you know you're part of the doctor the doctor who universe or have, i'm not sure exactly what that's called yeah but like how do you know how do the fans of of that compare to like fans of new amsterdam i feel so lucky when it comes to the fan base because something like um a lot of sci-fi is is quite similar i think but but doctor who particularly that that family is loyal and every single project I have done, science fiction or not, they will step up and support you. And whether they stay, because it's their cup of tea or not, is a different story. I think with Sensei, a lot of people did. Um, because it is just that thing you attracts the sort of audience that has an open mind, I think, and is very, you know, inclusive and very sort of uh, woke. Yeah. <laughs> but then something like New Amsterdam, I had a lot of people on social media saying, oh, we see you're in a new show, I'll check it out. And then they'll write, came for you, stayed for the rest of it. Yeah. And because it is a good show, so I really do feel like it's so it's such an honor and it's such a um, you know it's such a blessing to be able to have this fan base that will support you throughout it's really reassuring yeah well assuming that you know she does survive uh, the <laughs> that cliffhanger, yeah. what are some things that you would like to explore for for her in season two i mean i did law and order for for years and with that show um it's very much about the uh their profession is is the main character if you like um and the crime is the main character so you never really see these people outside of work and mm. what they listen to when they get home and what beverage they drink and yeah. what you know all of that side of it and there was no reason why the show won't go in that direction but we've just established season one as getting to know them in a in a professional capacity and mm. their kind of dynamic with each other um but i'd love to see them at home a little bit more i'd love to just get to see them in their pajamas and yeah and just get to know them get to know these people i'm bowled over by the sort of chemistry that that's happening between us as well we just feel Really blessed. Yeah. Well, Agreed. you mentioned chemistry, and uh, a, lot of the, <laughs> a lot of the fans are, you know, they're wondering if, if Helen has, you know, real feelings for, for Max. Why does everyone always go that way round? Why is it always one-sided? <laughs> does or Helen can, have feelings for Max? They can both have feelings for one another. But it's never, like, it's never s presented like that, Andy. <laughs> Welcome to network television. <laughs> they will always do that to you. Does she have feelings for him? Do they have feelings for each other? I think they very much are um, exploring or experiencing something quite unique mm. in their lives. I think they have formative, wholesome relationships with other people, genuine, but it doesn't affect 
fact or change the fact that you can maybe have a different kind of relationship with another human being that is different but occupies maybe the same part of your soul or your heart or you know we all people I think in our lives fulfill different sort of requirements for us on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. All of we have more than one friend. We you know go to different family members when we need something, or they you know you feel you can you know present them or, or or provide them with something. So I think it's the same when it comes to matters of the heart. It's sort of blurry. <laughs> yeah, it is funny when people always go the romantic route for like workplace dramas where it's like you're not supposed to like really date all the people you work with. Like yeah, <laughs> but people just it's a show, so people want that to happen. I guess. I guess so. Although you get to get a lot of like office romances and stuff. That's true. There's That's people true. that you see every day <laughs> and stuff. But I don't know. I just know that it's um. It's great working with Ryan and with all the cast, but I just, I love exploring where that is going to go because none of us know and I feel like the writers just change it organically as well. Yeah. It lives on its own. <laughs> it does. <laughs> you said you want to see them at home. I'm kind of like envisioning now. I really want her to have like a Doctor Who poster <laughs> next, to, like, next to a Sensei <laughs> poster. I want her to just be like a fan of all She's the things a like She's sci-fi like head. <laughs> Definitely. I like that little like wink. Oh my god. I think god. I just tried to wink and it did not. Did it, was it a bit of a twitch? Um, when I did Law and Order, Bradley Walsh's character had a TARDIS on his desk. There you go. So I'm going to ask for something to just be threaded through. I think that would be And really I'll fun. give you credit for it. Oh, thank you. It's S-W-I-F-T <laughs> is the last name, so just get that. Like Taylor. Pop it up on the screen. <laughs> and he can't wink either. <laughs> Aww, it's true. <laughs>